Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, we'll start the organizational meeting of the Ag Service Board. <clears throat> Just want to note that the meetings are recorded and may be posted on the official um, Wheatland County website and or via social media. First item of business, just voting procedure consensus. This is just the same um, procedure that is followed with council organizations, so we thought we'd include that. Um, should there be more than one nomination for position, a secret ballot will be taken with the candidate receiving the majority of the votes declared successful for the position, um, the majority in this case being five with the board of nine. In the case where a clear majority is not successful in the first vote, then the voting would continue on first and second choice only, and the third and subsequent parties would be eliminated. So with that, I'd like to call for um, nominations to the chair. Uh, actually, just before that, um, as per the ASB bylaw uh, 5.2, um, the board shall elect a council member um, to act as chairperson and uh, uh, vice chair as well. So, so with that, is there nominations for chair? I'll nominate Jason Wilson. I accept. Councillor Wilson has been nominated. Is there any further nominations? Is there any further nominations? Hearing none, can somebody move nomination cease? Move nomination cease. You didn't see Ben's hand. <laughs> no. Member uh, Eichert moves nomination cease. Congratulations, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> I'll turn things over to you. Good morning. Move to nominations for vice chair. I'll open the floor for no nominations. Nominations for vice chair are open. I'll nominate Glenn Kester. Glenn Kester has been nominated. Do you accept your nomination, Glenn? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you. I'll call two more times for nominations. Any nominations for vice chair? Nominations for vice chair. Hearing or seeing none, can I have somebody move to close nominations? Also move. Don has moved. Congratulations, Glenn. You're vice chair of the ASB. Okay. Thank you. Uh, adoption of the, the agenda. Are there any additions to the organization? Seeing none, can I have the board's wishes? Ben has moved the agenda. Oh, we didn't do the voting procedure, sorry, my bad. Um, for voting procedures with the hybrid meeting, we, I will be calling for Opposition. If there is no opposition, it is carried. If there is, we will go to a roll call vote. Is there any opposition for Ben's motion to uh, adopt the agenda? Hearing and seeing none, that is carried. Appointment to committees. Uh, um. Yeah, as per uh, ASB bylaw 5.3, um, the board may appoint one or more advisory committees with respect to any matter relating to the board's function. Um, so we do have a, a couple of committee appointments. The first one being the Agricultural Service Board Bursary and Environmental Stewardship Awards Committee. Um, current membership on that committee is um, Wilson Eichert and Van Lahr with Armstrong as alternate. Um, the last <clears throat> couple of years actually we've just uh, I think we've done uh, most of our business through um, email um, just because of COVID obviously so um, but the, the mandate of the committee is to select um, bursary recipients as well as environmental stewardship uh, awards so 
I'll first ask if those members would like to stay on the committee. I'll stay on. Barry? I'd be more than happy. Ben, are you good with alternate? I'll move that the uh, same members that were on last year stay on. <clears throat> if somebody else wants to sit as alternate, they can in my place because I'm uh, not going to be here the whole year. But three. Anybody interested? So then we will have Eichert, Wilson, Van Lahr with Link as alternate. Yeah. And you'll make that? Yeah. Ben has made that motion. <coughs> Questions, concerns? Opposition, anybody against the motion? Hearing and seeing none, that is carried. The Alice Partnership Advisory Committee. So with our uh, Alice committee, generally those uh, meetings follow Agricultural Service Board meetings, and we do have one immediately following this. Um, current membership is um, Jason Wilson, Ben Armstrong is alternate. Um, previous members were um, Barry Van Lahr and Rex Harwood. So um, with our terms of reference, it does state that appointments will run with the term of the ASB membership of the appointee. So with that, um, I'm just requesting to appoint Brittany uh, Walker for one year term. Um, she would be new on the committee and her Ag Service Board term expires at the end of this year. And Barry is newly appointed for a three year term expiring in October, 2023. Um, I guess having said that, if you wish to stay on or, or I guess if you wanna go off, it would be at your privilege. Chairman, but if, uh, if like, anybody would like to sit on the Alice, it is a very good program. I don't know if I will be here next year, so it will be only for a year if I sit on it. But yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I I'm happy to sit on it for another year. Brittany, you're good. Harry, you're good. And then we need one alternate, right? Ben, are you good with staying as alternate? I or? Say there, if somebody else wants to take a shot at it, have at her. That's uh, it's it's like you said, it's a good program. But I'm uh, backing out, so somebody else get in there and get your feet wet. We both know we won't be there. I that. know you I won't. Yeah. Earlier, said I might not. I yeah. might not either. I'm going with the might. <laughs> um. Sorry, learn something new for sure. Alternate. We have somebody make that motion that Wilson Barry and Brittany with alternate as Scott Clawson. I'll make that motion. Tom. Tom has made the motion. Any opposition to those board members sitting on the Alice Pact? Seeing and hearing none, that is carried. ASB calendar meeting dates and times. Um, yeah, so those were set at the council organizational meeting. Maybe I will just make mention of the Alice committee. As I said, generally it follows up ASB. Um, what we are gonna do um, after this meeting at the Alice is just discuss the terms of reference and we're suggesting that those meetings are at the call of the chair or, or in discussion with the coordinator um, so we can just have more timely meetings rather than trying to fit it in after ASB and depending on when we're done, that sort of thing. So just for your info. That's good. So I'll, I'll move that the calendar date for the ASB meetings be as listed. Any questions with Ben's motion? Seeing and hearing none. This carried. Um, moving on. 
ASB organizational meeting. Regular meeting. Are those minutes or sorry? Well not just dates. Listed out. Oh. Okay, that's it. Move to adjourn. Guess we don't need to do that, eh? I deem that adjourned. Moving on to the regular meeting. I'll call this meeting to order at 914. Note all of these meetings are happening through section 199 of the MGA to have a hybrid in-person and conference call meeting. They can be posted on the web, uh, Wheatland County website and we will be having a different kind of voting structure where we call for opposition and if there is opposition we will have a roll call vote. If there is no opposition, it is deemed carried. Adoption of the agenda for the organ uh, for the regular uh, ASB meeting. Any questions, additions, deletions? None from the board. I have a mover. <coughs> so moved. Uh, member Link has moved. Any opposition? Seeing and hearing none, that is carried. Adoption of the October 7th, 2020 meeting minutes. So moved. Ben has moved. Any opposition? Seeing and hearing none, that's carried. Items up for discussion and related business. Uh, 2.2. Point one, 2021 Environmental Stewardship Award recipients. Do you want to speak to that or do you want to? Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman. So um, this year we actually had um, four nominations for the Environmental Stewardship Award recipients. Um, it was just discussed with the committee through email um, with the uh, Three selections um, there as you can see in the recommendation for the community stewardship award to the Rosebud Beautification Committee, um, Youth Stewardship Award to Jaffron Cormack and Jay Lazlo Legacy Award to Rod Bergowan and family um, and then included in your package is a description of um, those nominations and uh, what they've done and reasoning for the awards. So. Any questions? I would just like to congratulate those winners. Um, can we have the board's wishes to accept that as? Also move. Move the recommendation. Recommendation. To award those certain. Donna has moved the. Stewardship Award recipients. Any opposition to that motion? Seeing and hearing none, that is carried. Provincial Service Board Conference. Agriculture Service Board Conference. Provincial. Say it backwards a few more times. So the uh, 2021 Provincial Agricultural Service Board Conference obviously is going to be held virtually this year, um, just uh, one day, January the 21st. Um, so we have included the whole package um, agenda in, um, in the ASB package. Um, it includes resolutions, um, some discussions during the meeting, so uh, don't need to go through all that, but just from an attendance standpoint, um, registration is $350 for the entire municipality, regardless of uh, um, who is attending. Um, but I do need to know um, for voting for the resolutions um, who will be attending or who will be um, who I should be listing as voting members. And generally, it's chair and vice chair if they'll be in attendance. So. All be. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, I can be there too. 
Any uh, anybody else like to go to the conference virtually? You? Yeah. Do you do you have to list the names? So what I'll do, I just have to list those two names. Um, I'll For just board. send out the information to everybody, the call in uh, number, et cetera, to the whole board. So then I'll just uh, leave it up to you folks to decide. Um, but like I said, there's the agenda to to look at those, along with all the the resolutions. Um, the resolutions I do have down just as in a separate agenda item as well, um, just as information. So I have somebody move that Chair Wilson and Vice Chair Kester will be the voting members. I can move that. And then uh, we'll move that. Any questions to that motion? Seeing and hearing none, that's carried. And then can we have somebody move the recommendation as well <laughs> that uh, approve attendance for ASB and administration to the provincial conference? So moved. Scott is moved. Any questions, concerns? All the vote, no opposition. Seeing and hearing none, that's carried. Any resolutions about solar farms? Just vote negative, okay? Don't tell me what to do, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Sustainable funding for ASB Provincial Committee. Yeah, sorry, it's uh, it's way down in the package there, um, as I said, because of all the resolutions. Um, but this uh, will be coming forward at the Provincial Conference. Um, and what they ask is that there is a provincial um, agricultural service board committee whose mandate is to to meet with um, the minister at least once a year, once a year, um, along with that committee um, where there's membership from each of the regions, is a um, executive assistant to help primarily with the resolution process at the conference, um, getting everything together and. Um, yeah, just organizing things there. So there had been a grant from Alberta Agriculture for that executive position and um, expenses for the committee historically have been paid through revenues from registrations for the provincial conference. So what the committee is asking is for each ASB to um, cover that cost now. And if you see on page 96, the cost would be for each ASB starting in 2022, 375, um, and 500 in 2023, 600 in 2024, and 2025. So, so that will be coming forward for approval at the conference. So I don't know if there's any discussion that you'd want to have on that prior to. Um, I think it's unfortunately one of those realities of, of today with reduced funding and grant cuts. And Any questions about that for us? Any thoughts on the topic? Not unexpected and aligned with our discussion previously about we may need to increase you know, our financial commitments to things that other sources of funding are reduced. I would support it. So move his information then. Link has moved as information. There's no other concerns. Questions? Call a vote. Any opposition? Seeing and hearing none, that is carried. Resolutions. Next one. Um, again, so yeah, sorry for having this concluded twice. Like I said, it is in the package for the ASB meeting, but um, the resolutions are here um, just for your review and for your information. There has been a request, though, from the provincial committee that if there is any thought of amendments um, to the resolutions, that if possible, that they're sent um, prior to the conference um, and with a deadline of. Uh, Friday, I believe, January the 15th. Um, so I don't know if you've had any time to review them. Um, 
or if there is, I guess, prior to, like I said, Friday, maybe let me know so I can forward it on to the committee if there's any changes that you'd like to make. Anybody have questions on the resolutions? So they'll present the resolution with the change or they'll present the resolution and then they'll discuss the change that somebody's asking for or how? I would assume they would pre present the original resolution as is. I think just from a uh, logistical standpoint, being, ha being able to have those suggested changes prior, um, they'll be ready to go with those. Um, you know, up on the screen right away rather than trying to type and make changes as things go. So the municipality will still have to ask for a amendment through throughout the whole process. Any other questions? Yeah. <coughs> any other questions? Uh, as Russ said, look them over. If you see anything you'd like to change on any of them, send them to Russ and then we can get them into the committee. Can we have somebody uh, move his information? Oh, did I hear something? I'll move Glenn. his information. Okay, and thanks, also, Glenn. And also, Jason, I, uh, I just checked my calendar. I have an hour Zoom meeting on the 21st in the morning from 10 to 11. I really, really shouldn't miss. So maybe it would. I can join the provincial conference after that before but if there's any voting needs that occur during that I won't be there so it would be maybe prudent if we find somebody else to vote on if something comes up okay sorry about oh, that it, no, I just okay. got a reminder on my phone as as we were talking no I appreciate you letting us know I do think the voting though is it's like the, the resolutions is at 2 30 yeah the only thing in the morning just presentations, I think. So. Yeah, I think we'll be okay if we leave you on the voting card because it's not supposed to be till the afternoon, Glenn. So Okay. If something else comes up, but I just got a an invite on my calendar from ten to eleven and there's sounds good. Pretty, I'm sure we can work something pretty. around that day too. So Glenn has okay. moved his information. Any questions, concerns? All the vote. Any opposition to the motion? Seeing and hearing none, that is carried. Now to the 2022 summer tour. Lovely. Okay. Um, after some thought, um, just around kind of how we would handle this and budget wise, we are making a recommendation to. Um, rescind the motion to host the provincial summer tour in 2022. Um, so just from a kind of reasoning standpoint, obviously COVID does come into play somewhat. I would, you know, we would hope that in 2022 things will be sorted out. Um, there is some concern, you know, as far as uh, stops being able to commit though, obviously we'd have to have things set up this year for for stops and um, just how that would work if there would be you know if stops would be comfortable hosting that large number of people um, I think from the standpoint of uh, tour attendees there may be limited attendance as well um, you know putting a bunch of people on a bus um, and, and you know, just in, in consideration of the difficulties we've had and where things will be. Um, like I said, we hope things will be kind of, everybody will be vaccinated by the fall and things will be moving forward. Um, but I guess we're just obviously uncertain. The other aspect, obviously, is just the cost. Um, you know, in this kind of time of economic uncertainty, um, you know, Lethbridge County I did have a discussion with them. They they were to host in 2023, um, and purely for economic reasons, they've decided to, to withdraw um, hosting in 2023 as well. So we did attach just kind of a rough, um, you know, what we thought things would cost, um, what we'd be looking at for potential donations and where we'd be. We're thinking 
you know, we would be around $130,000 cash outlay from the municipality. Um, and that's with a $25,000 in donations, which again, you know, would be just, it's just a, a kind of a guess at this time. Um, along with that, there'd probably be similar costs in staff time um, through planning this year and then through the tour itself based on discussions with other municipalities. So, um, you know, costs in that 130 to 150,000 range for staff time, along with a coordinator, which we did have planned for part of the year starting this year. Um, So yeah, um, as I said, with staff, it's just, uh, I guess, as we kind of struggled, obviously, as you know, with 2020, kind of getting things done in a timely manner and budget, um, I would just be hesitant to maybe put resources to that when there still is some uncertainty around budget and, and where we'll be at um, this year. Just one other thing to consider, a couple other things as well, is just if we do pull out now, if there is interest from another municipality, they would still have time to pick it up. Um, you know, I'm not sure there would be or not. Uh, and then the factor of the election being this year, so potential, it sounds like for being obviously some new board members, um, you know, that we could have for next year so. So like I said, uh, that's kind of where we're at. Obviously, it, uh, you know, it's not something that we would take lightly. I mean, we put a lot of thought into it. I, I know um, it would be nice to be able to do, and it would be a, a good thing for the municipality, I think, but um, that's kind of where we're at, so. Yeah, and that being said, it is a big decision, decision, so I would like to hear from everybody on this topic, so I'll just open the floor up and everybody can throw in their thoughts. I'd like to see who else get one of these things under their belt after this COVID thing. You know, I've got no problems putting it off for we can find out whether or not somebody else can pull this off. Or I have no idea. I'll, I'll have to gauge how fearful people are. I mean, I can judge it on my own and go, yeah, if they had one tomorrow, I'd go, but I'm not. I know I'm I'm the exception of the rule, so I'd like to see somebody boldly go where we appear to be. Hey guys, there's there's silence. Come on, keep going. <clears throat> okay, uh, Jason. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I I have a tendency to agree with Russell. I would even maybe suggest that uh, the next ASB board, if there's going to be vacancies, should be tasked with this decision. Uh, one other thought too, I, I know that there's a parcel of money involved there, but this uh, tour is, uh, it's really an economic benefit like advertising your county. I'm just wondering maybe our economic committee might be want to become part of it too. Uh, they could, uh, I don't know if they have budget they can put in for advertising, but they can actually have some sites maybe they would like to see or maybe even be part of, of the planning of this too, just the thought. It's, uh, we're showing off the county a certain amount of pride, but there's also a certain amount of uh, uh, investment that we are hoping to garner investment in the county. Maybe somebody wants to move here. Maybe somebody sees opportunities here. It's uh, probably better than putting radio ads on. My thoughts, anyway. But yeah, I would be sure. in so, favor of canceling. Okay. Thank you for your Amber, sorry to cut you off there. No, that's okay. The hybrid meeting can be tricky. Um, I support staff's recommendation. It's really disappointing for me because I think it would be, I would echo much of what Member Kester said. I think it would be an amazing opportunity to uh, showcase Wheatland County and our egg producers and 
like the incredibly progressive practices that happen here and the niche business, like just the entire thing. And so that's really disappointing for me, but we can't change the reality of the situation. I know there will be fiscal constraint for um, some people that might otherwise consider financial support for it. So, and some logistical challenges, obviously. So for me, the, the bottom line comes down to staff capacity right now. And I don't think it's fair to ask staff to allocate capacity to this when we're kind of going to bare bones on some stuff. So I, my hope would be that we could get back in the queue in the future and everything will turn around and we can look at it then. So I would support canceling for now. I like the rationale of giving another municipality the option to pick it up if they feel they have capacity. And there may be municipalities that do, so. I support. I, I agree with the um, rest of his team that we do not do it, but I do agree with Glenn, Glenn that um, I am going to bring it to the Act Dev Board mm -hmm. and see for, uh, to showcase the county, um, even for investment attraction for, um, you know, farm, farm uh, businesses, ag businesses. I think that would help, so I will definitely take it to the to the ECH board. Members at large, any thoughts? Fully agree. Yeah, it, it, it's strange times, you know, and uh, it, um, we have lots to show, uh, but it's the uncertainty that makes it scary. And I, I like to have a little rest, probably, and let's look at another day. Like, you feel more bit more spirit then. Mm -hmm. Same thing. I agree with Russ's <laughs> recommendation. You guys, for me, uh, COVID is becoming ingrained in some people, like people's future thoughts already. Like there's going to be right, wrong, or indifferent. People are thinking different already two years ahead of time. So I think this is wise. It's very disappointing. I was really hoping that we could do this, but uh, see how this crazy world works out. More Ben stand. Yeah, I can do with it. My only thoughts are going through my head are: do you cancel it outright, or just say you're 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 holding it off for two years, so that you you're still in the queue if you're interested in doing that. Surely, to God, in three years something's going to happen. That if not, we're the last thing we're going to be worrying about is a fresh, uh, an egg tour. Because there'll be other issues going on. <clears throat> Myself, I would say to just put a notice out that we're postponing it for for uh, two years and and, to, and revisit it at that time, but not to completely walk away from it. Yeah, me and Russ had a discussion prior to the meeting a couple of weeks ago, and that that was brought up. I said, "Well, let's just put in for twenty cancel this and put in for twenty twenty six right away," and uh, like within the month or. And we both got talking, and like Russ said, it's an election year. I, I, I as a counselor now, don't know if I want to put whoever's going to be in that seat, in these seats, in 10 months into the commitment of hosting. So maybe, I mean, it's only going to be a year next year organizational that ASB can choose whether to put in for a 2026 or 2026. 2027 or whatever but I fully agree I mean I, I brought up the exact same thing to us I said well I I don't want to lose that opportunity I want to do it right away but if you postpone it your your planning's on hold you're not spending money you're not doing anything and when the next council comes in whoever that ends up being they have the final choice in order they want to move ahead with it depending on what's happening out in the great country Amber Russ, do you happen to know, I know often the ASB provincial tours are booked fairly far in advance. Do you know who is so still committed for the future? I know you said Lethbridge pulled out for 2023. Yeah, as far as I know, currently there is no commitment. So, I, yeah, I don't think there'll be an issue, even waiting for a new board, picking any year you want. Like I said, I think things just are going to look different for a while, whether it's COVID or, or from a budget standpoint. So... I'm fairly confident if the the board or the new board wants to to go forward or be you know some involvement with the economic development board, there's there's going to be lots of years available. Yeah, Tom, you'll still be able to 
be the first one out of the gate and go where no man has gone before. Five years. <laughs> Scott. Just kind of thinking out of the box here, would there be some merit in thinking um, some promotional things? I don't know if it would help or not. You could do something, you know, I'm thinking drone shots, or if you want to have promote some of the businesses that you would have had on a tour <coughs> with economic development and have sure. something on a website or, you know, similar to what you're doing promoting, you know, just kind of put some money in that to help out because people still need to know, especially now with this pandemic, a lot of people are want to go closer to the food source. They want to see where it is and that, that carries a lot of weight. So it will help out in many ways. I think Maybe we're already doing that. I don't know. I think the act board could do a really good job on innovation meets tradition. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. I mean, we have so many centennial farms. We have pig farms. We've got cattle ranches. We've got thousand acre grain farms. If we did a shot of those too, and not just the businesses in the hamlet, right. but, but those farms from Dallum to Carver. Yeah. Yeah. That that would that's a great idea. Even even have its own website or something or however it would work. So you have that. So you don't want to lose that information. You want to be able to update it and highlight somebody and just kind of get its own. Yeah. Amber. I love the idea, Scott. I think it's brilliant, and I don't know. I'm mindful of uh, our egg department's capacity, but I wonder if it might be like given the budgetary change that we're considering with the tour. Like, even if we all reallocated a small portion, and I don't know what your budget looks like, but just to float this idea, reallocate a small portion of that budget to, like, partner a little bit, whether it's staff time or if there's equipment needed for showcasing. or I think it would be great to keep it on the WC Infinite website because mm -hmm. egg t is a huge part our of business, yeah. 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 Like, I don't necessarily think we need to separate it out, but... I don't know how much capacity your staff have, but just if if we could utilize well, some of the ASB staff that with staff. that dev, yeah, yeah because um, you know, like a, even the Alice program, Susan. yeah, Sarah and Alyssa's knowledge and Russ's knowledge of mm -hmm. the staff knowledge, the unique sure. projects, and and yeah, bring Alice. I I love it. I think it's brilliant. Yeah. And you bring already are doing that. it. We are doing it. We just didn't do it for actual just farm. Yeah, we did. Uh, we are doing a. Uh, um, conversation with um, ag tourism operators. Yeah. So this would just be one step. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, great so idea. You think about right now, there's so many people that want to know this stuff. And, and if you could have it now, you'd probably have more people that would come from the city to see what's going on right now because of the change in stock. So take advantage of that. Try to promote it. That's all I'm Yeah, or even spark like current residents because we. Yeah. I think it's 85% of um, new businesses or business expansions come from current businesses in general. Um, so, you know, a video like that might spark like, oh, we could do this on mm -hmm. our farm or on our ranch. I love it. Why don't we leave it on the economic development side? And we'll ask for support when it comes and up. And Patrick and uh, Matt can yep. do the logistics on the working with the ASB yep. side of the county. I mean, I, I'll gladly because that's not so much of the, not so much of the board I sit on. Maybe the marketing end, so I, I can just jump over there and be the rep of ASB on that side, just for that one yep. project too. Awesome. So, if I could you know, speak, speak. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So just just on that point, we actually do have, um, as everyone remembers from the uh, ASB strategic plan, there is a proposal this year to to do that same similar thing with with uh, potentially a, a contract um, communications person that will bring forward these kind of um, yeah, enhancements or, or uh, attention to the Ag Service Board and and uh, the the farms, kind of taking the economic development and just taking it an extra step, focusing strictly on Ag. So so talking about funding, we do have some. Somebody set aside in this budget for that already. Okay. So. You know, we could highlight the Wilson horse ranches. You want to do this, Tom? I'll do this today. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I don't think I don't think we need a motion to let Donna bring that back, but we do need a motion to. Um, 
sorry, my computer went down. To rescind our interest or yes. I'll make the motion to rescind our twenty twenty two SB tour summer tour date. Good enough for you, Russ. Any more questions, concerns? Seeing, hearing none, I'll call the vote. Is any member in opposition of Tom's motion? Hearing and seeing none, that is carried. Moving to chair's report. Well, I have nothing to report. It's been pretty damn slow. But I would like to, just on that, I this is kind of our chance to do a quick round table of um, issues that you're facing. And um, I know Donna brought something up to me, so I'll just let her. Well, I just want to know the procedure. I know that we um, handle the grain bags. What is the procedure, if you don't mind telling me how it works? Because I'm getting a couple, um, I'm going to go see a couple ratepayers that are that they have questions. And I want to make sure I know the procedure in my head before I talk to them. Don't mind. Um, so we are a collection site for plastic grain bags which means that we can take them from anywhere. Um, but what we do as a service for our rate pairs is that we go out and roll the bags. Um, go ahead. A quick question. Do you go to their, their farm and collect them? Okay. Yes. So we go to their farm or if they're out in the field to roll them up and then we bring them back. So and the reason we started down that path was primarily for the recycler to have the size of bags they needed and the cleanliness of bags they needed. Um, and uh, it, it's worked out extremely well. We're to the point now where they don't even question what we bring um, just because they know what they're gonna get. So um, with Clean Farms, with their pilot program, they had originally um, put 20, I think, asked for 20 sites in the province. I think they've added a few more now. So obviously, like I said, we're one. Um, Drumheller is one as well. Foothills County is one. Um, and I think through the time since we have been a collection site, we've gotten bags in from one other area, or like from outside our area where they've been delivered to us. So, um, and when that happens, we would look at them, make the decision if we thought we needed to re-roll them because of cleanliness or size, or if we could accept them as is and then just haul, uh, haul them to the recycler. So once um, we got the bags in, we make arrangements with the recycler, which is down at Green Acres Colony, to haul a load down and take it down there. And then they pay us for the bags. So. Who cleans the bags? The farmer? We do, just from rolling them by spreading them out to get rid of... It's primarily any um, like large chunks of grain, rotten grain or rocks that'll cause issues when they go through the shredder at the recycler. Right. So just the the process of rolling them out and dragging them across the stubble or the ground gets them out enough. Like they don't have to be pristine. They're still, you know, okay. they can still have a little bit of mud on them, that sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, we just, uh, producers call us. We go out, make arrangements as best we can to try to hit folks in an area right. if we right. can. Um, Cognizant, of course, um, Club Root now has had some challenges for us having to wash between landowners, you know, particularly depending on the, the conditions and where it's at, if it's in the yard versus in a field. So there's no word for the producer. Okay. Yeah, the, the producer, if it depends um, on uh, what we have available for staff, like sometimes there is a need for producers to help um, some, but um, for the most part, you know, if the bags are laid out, we can just go and roll them up and we're on our way, so. The producer doesn't get any for the bag, either we take all of them. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have anything they learned in the last three months? Other than alcohol? Might have been prior to the last three months, but just some increasing issues for surface rates and these payments. And um, I haven't checked in lately, but there was a perhaps like a restart of the surface rates group, and 
So just if anyone else is experiencing that, um, I can find out who the current contact is. Uh, Ken Sobe was the one who I'd been in touch with. Um, but he was- Bain has all the meeting dates. He's the okay. secretary. Okay. So I was supposed to go, but right. my cat was stuck. Oh, right. Um, Scott attended one and I've attended one. But yep. they have a, a good core group that uh, is working on that. So just so that people are aware there is a, a group that's restarting. And there's a group out there that's suing. The North River. Yeah. And there's a bunch of them. I got my letter. Finally. I did provide resources from the Farmer's Advocate Office just that may be helpful for the ratepayers. So. There's a group for I don't know what it's used to. Group that's right. Um, Basically revenue. for, so what some of the ratepayers are finding is that the uh, oil and gas um, lease contracts are, as they come up for renewal, they're being, what I'm hearing is some were offered significantly reduced lease rates and there's, there is a, right. a process um, that is to be followed. I think there's supposed to be negotiations in good faith and things like that. So um, just helping people be aware of what the expected processes are, what their rights are as the landowners, things like that. So. Benieta. Oh, that's pretty, pretty quiet. I think the bigger issue, of <coughs> the surface rights one, yeah, the, the issue over the leases, that's been coming for a couple of years. But, uh, and you don't have a right as a landowner. That's what they got to realize. Some of the landowners have said, well, I'll just shut the gate and you aren't allowed in. You can't do that. Legally, you cannot do that. You're well, involved. if you don't, if you refuse to negotiate and they have to close the well. And then yeah, but if you don't negotiate, they still have a right to that well. You cannot stop them from coming Until they into close that it. well. Huh? Once they close it, they have no right. No, once they close it. But, so those are some of the issues out there. The bigger issue in our area is, is the... Is on, and the RCMP have been dealing with that for a while, is the theft that is still occurring in the rural area. Any other comments before we move to the rest of the report? Um, could I just uh, ask a question? I'm sorry, I'm not sure if I'm on mute. It's Barb Archibald. <laughs> sorry. Hi, Barb. You hear ahead. me. Hi, thanks, Jason. Um, I'm just wondering, is that a county service rights group? Or is this a provincial service rights uh, group that you were speaking of? Uh, the one that's being sort of reinstated is a Wheatland County one. Not like, okay. but just to be very clear, not affiliated with Wheatland County as a municipality, but ratepayer, like it's a ratepayer grassroots driven organization. Okay, great. Thank you. To Russ's report, then go ahead there, Russ. Take her away. Okay, you would have seen my report yesterday, um, <clears throat> and council as well. So, just kind of a year end total, um, as you can see, with uh, what we've done for mowing, spraying, um, our, our roadside mowing program. We did um, finish all our mowing uh, one cut, it was just obviously later in the season. Um, roadside spraying just shy of a thousand acres, um, substantial amount of seeding, uh, roadside seeding that was done through our um, road construction program. Um, you can see the photo down below on the right is just one of the bigger boroughs on Range Road 245 where we shredded straw for um, erosion control um, as the ground was quite light on that. Um, and then, as we discussed bags a little bit, 408 grain bags were rolled as of December 16th. So um, this year, this fall, next, uh, you know, through the winter here, or right up until spring, we're going to be busy because there's substantially more grain bags than there has been. And that's, a, you know, kind of just a factor of a good harvest season and, and good yield. So, um, so yeah, uh, as, as uh, discussed, the program is working out extremely well so um you know if there is any questions certainly forward folks on to me and we can let them know how things work and get them set up um 2020 shelter belt and uh, eco buck 
buffer seed seedling um, program. This was the uh, 2020 was the first year we had it. Um, there was less funds expended than we thought. Um, you know, part of it was there was a bit of hold back with COVID. We weren't sure budget wise. Um, and we have made some changes um, just to the parameters, um, whereas last year you could get um, for the seedlings themselves 50% of the cost up to 2,000. We've changed that to 75% up to 250 per plant to a maximum of $1,000. And that pretty much reflects what was happening anyways, um, where most of the applications were in that under $1,000 range. Um, and this is just an easier means of, of funding uh, per plant um, rather than trying to, we did have some requests come in for larger trees, so we had to kind of figure out if they were actually seedlings or not. So just a, a straight per plant rate, I think, is going to be easier way to do it. Um, and we have had discussions about hosting another shelter belt workshop, which was extremely well tended. Um, obviously, it would have to be virtual this time around, but there's just a shot of one of the projects that. Um, was completed under that program. Environmental Stewardship Awards, as we've discussed already, um, wetland replacement program and wetland policy, just to update, as this was a motion made, I think Member Armstrong had made a motion regarding our uh, participation with Alberta Environment in the wetland replacement program. Um, so these are just kind of dates that where LIS has had discussions or um, sent emails to, to AP requesting that modification of the MOU in regards to road construction work and we haven't received anything in writing from them on that and there doesn't appear to be any willingness um, you know to look at exempting impacts from road construction work in regards to the wetland policy requirements so um, also um, She's doing some work, um, has been on ER and ERE uh, in conjunction with planning and development to assist with those policies. Um, our environmental guide that we do, um, we have been doing, um, we're looking at doing just more of an ASB, uh, our agriculture and environment update this year. So it'll be a kind of a focus on all our programs and what we do rather than just the environmental stand point or the environmental side of things. Um, from the ag conservation side, um, ag conservation coordinators programs, um, she, she, see she interacts a lot you know, with our producers, whether it's through the, the CAP program or environmental farm plan or now our, our ALICE program um, and just what we've spent on those producer funding programs, whether it's the Safe Water Wells program Ag stewardship program or WRP uh, programs. So obviously, all have been you know, very successful with our producers. Um, the Crowfoot Creek project um, now is finally fully expended, just shy of two hundred thousand dollars that we've gotten in for grants um, through that program. Um, so as you can see, there has been a large impact along the Crowfoot in the amount of whether it's you know canal fenced off or off-site watering systems so um, I think it'll have a huge impact on water quality um, and I see the same thing happening with our Rosebud um, RRP program. Um, a couple um, events, uh, Working Well workshop that we hosted, the 13 attendee and Marginal Lands workshop with 87 and then just upcoming events, um, Green Acreages at the end of the month um, Red Bull uh, Ranching Conference, which we do with, in conjunction with a number of other, other municipalities. Again, just the uh, on uh, virtual February 2nd and 4th. Pollinator projects um, that Sarah has been working on and farm transition workshop that we had planned to host. Uh, I think it was in March 2020 that we had to cancel, obviously, and we'll be trying it in this March virtually, and that's in conjunction with uh, Rocky View County. So, was that the one with uh, Merle Good? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not sure just, yeah, if she's cured Merle or who'll be speaking, but yeah. And that's it for my report, Mr. Chairman. Any questions for Russ? Board's wishes. 
accept as information. I'll move that we accept as information and just thank you for the um, all the information in the report. I love seeing the annual review and all the work that's done and I think it's excellent. I don't know if there's a way to sort of summarize, like do some kind of amplifying of that to our rate payers and egg producers. And yeah, and I think we will do that, like I said, with this guide this year, rather than just doing, um, focusing on the environment um, and not just have the guide. I mean, there's a number of ways we can work with that, whether it's through the website or um, through Facebook, social media, et cetera. So, so we will ramp up our communications and try to um, broaden that scope out. The connector is something we always use um, and quite heavily represented in that as well. So we'll continue with that um, and maybe look to other means as well through our communications, up, our upcoming communications. So I'm just really proud of the work that this department does and I think it's important that people know. Thanks, I appreciate that. Members moved, any other questions? Call for the vote. Anybody in opposition? Hearing and seeing none, that is carried. Moving on to correspondence. Just through the oh. chair, um, and it's not on the agenda, Mr. Chairman, but if we now that we have Barb on the call, oh, maybe we could right. just check to see if she has anything to add from Albert Agriculture. Yes, Barb. Sorry, it's not on the agenda, so I kind of forgot about you, but uh, is there any updates from the province? Um, yeah, no problem. Thanks. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a lot to report. I thought I would just mention a couple of things. Um, you're, I know you're very aware Albert Agriculture and Forestry is going through some reorganization. Um, I know you're also very aware there's been a number of layoffs, and so the department does not prioritize doing extension or applied research anymore. Um, Research now will be done through RDAR, uh, the research or the sorry, the results driven applied research. There are no longer any specialists at the Egg Call Center, but the Egg Call Center apparently does still have some administration people who can direct farmers to um, where they hope that they can get their questions answered. With regards to our direct group, environmental stewardship and climate change, we've been amalgamated uh, into a new branch called Natural Resource Management Branch, which you may be aware of at this time already too. That branch will include environmental stewardship and climate change, irrigation, and the farm water divisions. So um, at that point, or at this point within restructuring, that's all that I'm familiar with. Uh, things affect us, but we don't always know what's you know coming down the pipe until it's here. Um, I thought I would also just mention CAP, Canadian Agriculture Partnership, is undergoing what is being called a CAP modernization. Um, we're in a five-year agreement that started April 2018 and goes to March of 2023, but apparently there will be changes made that will come into effect as of this April 1st, 2021, so partway through our, our CAP agreement. One thing that I know is that our number of programs is being reduced from 16 to 9, um, and as I mentioned, changes will be in effect as of April 1st. And for any questions regarding CAP, apparently the Ag Info Centre will still answer those questions, so people can call 310 farm. Um, hopefully at some point people can call uh, staff such as myself and we will have answers for you, but right now I, I don't. But those are just a couple things I wanted to highlight so everyone knows where, where we sit right now within the department and within CAP. Great, thanks Jason. No, thank you Barb. Any questions for Barb? Seeing none. If it was on the agenda, do I need to move his info? If it wasn't on the agenda, do I need to move his information, Amber? I think we could just agree that it's in addition to the agenda okay. and we could accept it as information. I have somebody accept that as information. Brittany, thank you for being on the agenda. We will uh, 
scrutiny is moved. Any questions? And hearing none, I'll call for the vote. Any opposition? Seeing and hearing none, that is carried. Moving to correspondence. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, maybe I'll make mention just of the, the last item, and I was intending to bring this up in my report just in regards to the Strict 9 program. Um, but as you can see, there's a letter from Agromax, the manufacturer of Strict 9. Um, so they're uh, currently able to manufacture up till March 4th of this year, and then they're done. Um, we are able to sell um, until March 4th of 2022. And producers are able to sell or to use it up till March of 2023. So um, if they don't use it up till 2023, right? I don't know. I know all the producers that have it will. So I'm not worried about it. <laughs> um, anyways, so what that means, um, the provinces of Alberta and Saskatchewan have had for asked for an extension with the Pest Management Regulatory Agency because of COVID um, and the limited availability of Strict 9. Um, but what's going to happen, obviously, is I do have some in stock now waiting for some more. I don't know what I'm going to get in, so I'm just going to have to try to balance what I have for demand versus what I have in and, and try to make that with producers or make that work with producers. Obviously, it's going to be challenging. Um, I know I have over 100 on a list right now. So, um, I'm on that. yeah, I think so. <laughs> so I'm going to have to, uh, like I said, once I know what I have in and... and on the list too, still. <laughs> uh, Smokey on the list. He's on the list. <laughs> Uh, yeah, figure out a way to, to distribute it as fairly as I can. So let's, we'll see what happens. But Strict 9 is going to be my life as usual for a few months, starting you know mid-February, first part of March. It's good to know that they're trying. Any other questions on the correspondence? I'm not going to read it out all to you. I'm not going to baby you. Can I have a move for his information? Thank you, Scott. Um, questions? Scott's got a motion on the floor to accept his information. Any opposition? Seeing and hearing none, it is carried. I adjourn the meeting. Thank you for coming in, everyone. <coughs>